I have continued to hit it with a mallet. It's not easy. <laughs> I've tried everything. Remember, swearing helps in these situations. It just ain't budging. across the channel between Langkawi and Taratau. We're now on the very southern part of Taratau. As you know, we've said before, Taratau is a beautiful national park. It's a very big island, but uh, there's not much on it other than nature. And that's pretty much all you can hear in this little anchorage here. We just anchored in about five meters. Uh, lots of sea eagles and Brahmini kites flying around, I think, they're nesting over there behind me and uh, just the sound of other birds and insects and what have you in the uh, dense forest there. It's a lovely little spot, very nice. getting ready to go. Um, the anchorage was so rolly that uh, I decided to move on and as I weighed anchor I managed to get the anchor all the way up and then it wouldn't go over the bow roller and it's now slipping. Don't know why. So I've had to duck into Talaga behind the island so there's less roll here. Uh, get the anchor down and um, I need to take stock and have a think about what's going on. Okay, so what follows is an example of the typical boat maintenance you can expect to deal with from time to time. It's a tale of patience, persistence, tears, remorse and a lot of swearing. Remember, swearing helps in these situations. This is what's happening. I'll press the um, uh, up button. If I press that, you can, you can hear the motor turning, but the actual uh, axle isn't. So if you imagine in the gearbox there's a shaft that comes out where the um, motor reaches the, um, I'll start again, where the, where the motor... Oh. Right, let me break this down for you since Jamie is incapable. There are two types of windlasses, vertical and horizontal. We'll talk more about the pros and cons later, but here's the setup in our vertical windlass. A 1400 watt motor is sent power via a solenoid which is attached to your foot switches allowing you to turn the motor one way to raise the chain and the other way to lower it. It's suspended horizontally and the shaft of the motor slots into the gearbox. It's held in place with a removable key. The gearbox is the thing that's bolted to the ceiling inside the boat, directly underneath the windlass on deck. Inside this gearbox is a worm drive. It's a simple arrangement with a worm and a worm gear or wheel. The worm gear is a cog with teeth that meshes into the worm. The motor turns the worm, creating an infinite rolling action. When it does this, the rolling motion of the worm turns the worm wheel, 
which is in turn connected to the shaft of the windlass. This shaft also has a key to lock inside the gearbox. That shaft drops through the deck. Half of it goes into the gearbox and the other half protrudes through the deck. The bit that protrudes from the deck has a number of seals and circlips to hold it in place and supposedly to prevent muck, dirt and salt water from entering into the shaft. Finally, the gypsy is placed over the shaft. The gypsy, also called a wildcat, is what your chain wraps round. This is normally made of two identical pieces. Some windlasses, like ours, have an additional drum, which then sits on top of the whole fitting. In this setup, there are a number of things that could have happened. The key from either the motor shaft or the windlass shaft could have worn down. The gears may have worn down. Either shaft may have snapped. Before disassembling everything, the easiest thing to do is check the motor to examine whether the key is worn down. When I say easiest, I am speaking relatively. For those of you who aren't familiar, our motor sits in a cupboard at the four peak. And when I last put the motor on, it took two of us. And this is the motor for the windlass. I think the first thing I need to do is to take this door off because it's getting in the way. So this is typical on uh, boat jobs, of course. No such thing as one job. It normally involves another four jobs. So uh, yeah, there we go. Slowly, slowly, catchy monkey. windless update. Uh, the first thing I've been able to do is to take the motor off. So this is the motor and this is the key. <sighs> Can't really see that but that drops into this slot here which then goes into the gearbox up there. So what I was hoping was that that key had worn and was just slipping. It is not the key in the motor and it's something going on in the gearbox. So now that the motor's okay, the next thing is to pull the shaft. But in order to pull the shaft, we need to remove the divider. So the idea is this comes off the top and uh, I now need to take off this divider, which is a stainless piece that goes in like this, that divides the chain up. Of course, typically we've got uh, a stainless screw into an aluminium body and there's a bit of corrosion so I'm having to get it out. Useful little trick. Uh, mole grips to give extra purchase so I can push down on that to undo that but um, I've just taken this one out and it's taken me about 10 minutes. You can see it's a very small screw. This one has come out okay. This one I've tried absolutely everything. I've tried freezing it, heating it, impact driver, all the tricks in the book and I just cannot remove this so I'm having to take drastic measures and actually cut this so I can remove this piece. I do have a spare one of these, which is a good thing. Um, and I'm hoping that once I can cut it, I can then maybe put some pliers on there to remove this. But, uh, it's a last resort, but I need to get this off. With the divider removed, we should be able to pull the shaft. So now I've got to start taking out uh, everything here. Okay, since we can't pull the shaft, the obvious thing now is to remove the gearbox. The idea is that by undoing the four retaining nuts, the gearbox should just drop. Lovely camera angle for you. This is where we have to be a contortionist. I'm trying to get the four retaining uh, nuts off the four bolts that go through the deck, which means number 13 spanner and uh, so we have to do it blind quite tight in here so there's not much room to actually move the spanner and in fact I think one of them you can only move sort of every, a couple of mil at a time this requires a bit of patience that's where we use our ESP our extrasensory perception that's 
Someone with an ESP, by the way, is called an Esper. Did you know that? It just does not want to drop down. Um, so this is day three, it's now uh, quarter past beer o'clock. This isn't one of those objects on the boat where you can go out and anchor and sail around and deal with over a period of time, like the water maker, for example. This is something that has to be dealt with now. Quick windless update on day four. There is no update. I have continued to hit it with a mallet uh, to try and freeze the shaft from beneath, from above. WD-40, ATF and acetone solution, everything. I've tried everything and it just ain't budging. Imagine if this had happened down in Sumatra. Okay, so it seems as if something has corroded in place inside the gearbox because it won't drop out. To add to the confusion, the bearing and the circlip are still in place, corroded to the aluminium base of the windlass on deck, so we can neither pull the shaft nor drop it down. You can see the bearings in there, uh, but you can also see they're caked in mud. The top of the bearing case just came off and uh, yeah, lots of, lots of mud in there. One person on the internet came up with this suggestion, which is ATF oil, automatic transmission fluid, which you put in your gearbox, mixed one-to-one uh, -one with acetone. Now, apparently this potentially could help get in between the steel uh, bearing and the aluminium housing. So uh, it should leave it overnight really, but uh, I've just poured some in. So I'm gonna leave that to settle for a bit whilst I look at other options. Uh, yesterday I bumped into a friend, John, who's a skipper of a powerboat and uh, his engineer said that he'd very kindly come and have a look at our uh, windlass problem. So we jumped in the dinghy and then the dinghy stopped working. Upshot was we had to take the old outboard off, or the new outboard, and we're now back to the old one. Our trusty Yamaha. Anyway, so to cut a long story short, it's now next morning and I'm going to go and get coffee and pick up Alex, the engineer, take him back to the boat and get him to have a look at the uh, windlass. Behind me is Royal Pearl and this is the boat that my friend John skippers and uh, his engineer Alex is going to come on the dinghy and go over to Esper and we're going to have a look at this windlass. Uh, we had a bit, a bit of a discussion about it yesterday and there is a general feeling that it can be hit from the top and to uh, try and break that circlip that's holding the shaft in place. So by whacking it down we might be able to break it. I've given it a go um, but maybe my hammer wasn't big enough. Maybe I just didn't try hard enough, but uh, that, I think that's the first thing we're gonna try when we get over there. Important in the sail boat, no? Very important. Very, very important. So eventually Alex resorts to an engineer's favorite tool, a five pound hammer. He smacks it from the top and sure enough, the gearbox drops, complete with shaft stuck inside it. Remember, if it doesn't fit, Use a big hammer. Uh, it's not easy. <laughs> Windless is off, been in touch with Quick and told them the situation. Said that I need a new base plate and a new gearbox and a few other few bits and pieces, only to be told that they no longer make this model. 